Hi friends, it's Susan from Mellow Pine. We are here with a great project and that is a kitchen cart with wheels. We had so much fun building this one and we are super stoked to share with you all. So let's get started. You can find the free plans for this build on our blog Mellow Pine by clicking on the link in the description below. To begin with, we used the miter saw to make the legs of the bar cart from 2x2 lumber. Once that was done, we made the bracing pieces. You will need two types of bracing pieces for this build, a longer one and a shorter one. We needed six pieces of each type to do this build. Check out our blog Mellow Pine for the exact measurements and other written details of this build. Once we were ready with the four leg pieces, six large bracing pieces and six short bracing pieces, it was time to plane all the pieces by a millimeter to ensure the surface is smooth. For this project, we decided to go with dowel joints to connect each piece. For this, we had to fix where to drill the holes for the dowel joints. We marked the locations on each leg where the bracing pieces had to be connected using the dowel pins. Remember that each leg piece will have bracing pieces coming in on the two adjacent sides. Now, it was time to do some sanding. We should have done the sanding before marking the locations in step 4 because a marked line got partly removed when we did the sanding. We sanded all the way from 120 grit to 220 grit and now it is time to make the holes for the dowel joints. For this, we used the drill and the dowel jig in combination. The dowel jig helps set the size of the drill hole and helps it stay vertical while drilling. You want the dowel pin to fit in snugly when hammered in with the mallet. The hole must be just right, not smaller or larger. To ensure uniform depth for all dowel joints, we need to set a drill stop on the drill while drilling. For aesthetic reasons, we mark the locations at a distance of one quarter inch from the edge on each leg piece using the drill sander. To make sure this one quarter inch measurement was uniform for all pieces, we used a one quarter inch thick piece of paduk we already had to act like a stop block for all the measurements. With three levels of bracing on one side of each leg piece and two drill holes at each level, there will be a total of 12 dowel holes on each leg piece in this build. The next step was making the dowel holes at the locations marked using the centering jig. So we used the same drill bit we used for the bracing pieces and drilled dowel holes in all the locations marked earlier. Then we filled each dowel hole with wood glue and hammered the correct sized dowel pins into the dowel hole. We first fitted the pin into the bracing piece and then used the hammer to push the dowel pin fixed on the bracing piece into the leg piece. So with this step, a dowel joint for one bracing piece was complete. When joining the bracing piece and the leg piece, we used the markings we did earlier to identify the right pairs for joining together. As you can see, we fixed the three shorter bracing pieces on each pair of legs of the kitchen cart using the dowel pins. So both sides of the kitchen cart were ready individually. We clamped them using pipe clamps and left them to dry. Note that when using pipe clamps or any clamp with a hard surface that touches wood, use a flat scrap piece in between the clamp and the actual piece you're making. This is to avoid any pressure marks on the wood from the clamp. Pine is especially susceptible to marks. The next step was making the tabletop panels. For this, we used 1x6 boards and we cut out 3 5.5 inch wide boards of 30 inch length for the top panel glue up. 5.5 is the actual width of the 1x6 board. We applied glue on the edge of each of the three board pieces and clamped them together for drying. This will make the tabletop of our kitchen cart. The width of the tabletop after glue up will be 18 inches, but we need only a width of 16 inches, so we'll be cutting inches off after the glue up. We glued everything up and packed them tight using all the clamps that we had. We used three bar clamps and our quick grip clamps but we didn't clamp them directly on the wood to avoid leaving any marks on the board. We came the next day and our parts were all ready with glue fully cured. We first unclamped the leg pieces and they looked alright. If you're getting into woodworking, I suggest you invest in pipe clamps as these are super cheap and truly lifesavers. So these will be the two legs for our bar cart. We now had to join the longer bracing pieces to the legs on both sides.
Now remember that we had already done the drilling of the towel holes for the longer bracing pieces as well earlier. So we repeated the earlier process and used wood glue and dowel pins to join the longer bracing pieces to both the legs. As you can see, we are joining all the six longer bracing pieces to each leg using dowel joinery. And after filling the holes with wood glue, we are driving the dowel pins into the drill holes using a mallet. So we did a lot of gluing and hammering and finally clamped everything up using a combination of pipe clamps and quick grip clamps to fit it together as one piece. So with this step, the frame for the kitchen cart was ready. We came back after a day and unclamped everything. And with this, the frame for the kitchen cart was ready. Now we can move on to the plywood shelf and fixing the tabletop. Now the next step was making the plywood shelves for the DIY kitchen cart. We used half inch plywood for the shelves. The size of the plywood shelf piece to be made was 27 and a quarter inch by 13 and a quarter inch according to the plan. We used the circular saw to first bring the large plywood sheet to a manageable size and then did the final sizing on the table saw. This can be done using a circular saw as well. After that, we cut out the slots for each of the four legs on the plywood shelf piece. We cut out a one and a half inch square on each corner of the plywood piece using a jigsaw. You might have noticed that we stacked the two sheets vertically and cut them both in one go. We tried fitting this board into the frame we made in the earlier step. It fit quite nicely. Once the dry fit was successful, we nailed each of the plywood shelves to each of the bracing pieces using the pneumatic nailer. We applied wood filler on the edges of the plywood shelves using a putty knife since we were planning on painting the entire frame except the tabletop. At this point, our tabletop panel was ready after curing. So we unclamped it and cut off 2 inches from the glued up panel to make it 16 and a half inches wide and 30 inches long. We then sanded it all the way from 120 grit to 220 grit. The next step was the wood burning of the tabletop panel. We used a flame torch to burn the wood until it was charcoal black evenly. You can vary the amount of heat and time of burning to achieve the desired color. We wanted a really dark top so we kept it under the flame for some time. We always place the pieces to be burned on an aluminium sheet to avoid the workbench from getting burned. You can also do the wood burning outside your shop on the ground as well. We skipped on burning the underside of the panel as it would not be visible in the final product. As you can see, the wood is warped on the ends after the burning due to the water inside evaporating. You can reduce warping by using kiln dried lumber. After the burning, we used a wire brush to brush the top panel to reveal the final finish after the wood burning. The air compressor is a real nice tool to have in your wood shop as it helps us remove the excess soot and dust. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. The next step was fixing a small guard piece on the edges of the plywood shelves to prevent things from rolling off the shelf. We use four pieces of size, half inch by three quarter inch pine molding, each of length 24 and a quarter inch, and fix them to our shelf using a pneumatic nailer after applying wood glue. At this point, the wood filler we applied had dried, so we sanded it down using our random orbital sander. We use rust oleum chalk paint for finishing the frame of the kitchen cart. For the first coat, we painted it using a paintbrush and for the second coat, we applied the same paint using a foam roller. If you're using chalk paint, you don't need to use a wood primer. We hand sanded it lightly before applying the second coat of paint. Once we finished with the painting, we left the frame to dry for a day. At this point, we applied the second coat using a foam roller. 
Okay, so now that the paint has all dried up, we are going to fix the top panel to the frame. We centered it carefully after measuring with tape and used wood glue to fix the tabletop to the frame. We then used our quick grip clamps to hold the panel. After placing the panel top, we nailed the tabletop to the frame to hold it in place until the glue fully cured. Now we applied two coats of Varathene water-based PU on the top to seal the tabletop. To get a really smooth finish, sand lightly after the first coat using a 320 grit sandpaper. Make sure to use caster wheels with a locking mechanism to prevent the cart from rolling off. The next step was fixing the towel bar and wheels for the DIY kitchen cart. It's best if you buy the towel bar first and size the width of the cart to match the towel bar. We did just that. We measured and centered the towel bar on the side of the frame before fixing it using screws. As the last step, we fixed four caster wheels to the bottom of the legs of the kitchen cart. So that's it! Here's the kitchen cart we will be using in our kitchen and also for our outdoor barbecues. We hope you like the project and we would love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell button below. We will be back soon with another project so until then happy DIYing!